Hi there! Today I'm going to show you how I made this small parts crosscut sled with an adjustable stop and a miter attachment. I'll leave a link to my website in the description below where you'll find all the measurements and a link to the original plans from Woodsmith Magazine that I used for this build. I started off with a small piece of 3 quarter inch plywood and marked the center on the top side. I then flipped it over to make some other markings that'll come in handy later on. More about that later. Over at my table saw, I positioned the fence so that the center marking lined up with the blade. I locked the fence down and removed the board so I could install the runners. I'm using this polyethylene runner, but you could alternatively make your own runners out of hardwood. I like the idea of these plastic runners since they're a perfect fit, slide smoothly, and won't be affected by fluctuations in temperature or humidity, which can cause wood runners to swell or shrink. I only needed one of these runners that I cut in half. I then used a few dimes in each miter slot to raise up the runners and applied a few drops of crazy glue before dropping the board into place and applied pressure for a couple minutes. With the runners temporarily attached, I was then able to flip over the board to drill some countersunk holes to permanently attach them with some screws and I made sure to screw these in by hand so I wouldn't split anything. Back at the table saw I did a test fit to make sure the fit was good and that the sled moved smoothly without any resistance. Next I moved on to making the front and back bridges. The plans I used called for hardwood, but I think plywood would do just fine. You'll need a full length bridge in the front, while a shorter one can be used at the back. At this point I'm only attaching the back bridge. The back bridge doesn't need to be square, so I just clamped it and countersunk some screws, making sure to avoid the center line where the blade will pass. I could now cut the kerf line in the sled, but I made sure not to cut all the way through, stopping just short of the front edge of the sled. Next I got to work on the fence. I need to cut a dado in this strip of plywood that'll hold the T-track. The dado has to be half an inch from one edge, so I used a piece of half inch plywood as a spacer to set up my router table. I could then raise my bit and make a few passes until the depth was just right. Now if you don't have a router table, you could also do this at the table saw. I checked the fit and made sure the T-track was below the surface. I then switched over to a chamfer bit to make a small chamfer on the front bottom side. I attached the front bridge with a single screw on one side and then clamped the fence to it. Note that the chamfered edge is on the bottom front edge closest to the blade so that the sawdust will have somewhere to escape and won't interfere with the fence. The fence needs to be square to the blade and there are various methods to do this like the five cut method. I'm not going to cut anything long with this sled, so I'm comfortable just using a square to line it up visually. Once I was happy with it, I clamped it down so I could flip the sled over and countersink some screws. Now this is where those lines come in handy, so you'll know exactly where to put the screws without potentially hitting the T-track. Speaking of the T-track, now would be a good time to install it. However, since my table saw has a safety mechanism that gets triggered by conductive material, I don't want the aluminum T-track touching the blade, so I'm using a different method. First I finished cutting the kerf line through the back fence. I then measured the length of the dados on each side, and cut the T-track pieces slightly shorter in order to leave a gap with the blade. The last step is to make a simple stop block that'll ride along the T-track. I used a piece of hardwood with some leftover backer board from an old IKEA dresser, but a quarter inch plywood will work just as well. Once it was dry, I drilled a hole for the flanged bolt using a backer to prevent tear out. 
I'm actually using toilet bolts, but the heads are a little too wide so they need to be sanded or filed down just a bit in order to fit the T-Trek. Now you could stop here, but I'm also going to show you how to build a simple attachment to cut miters. Oh, and I almost forgot I added a little box in the back for added safety and as a reminder to keep my fingers away from the blade. Alright, so moving on to the miter attachment, you'll need two identical squares, one from three quarter material and the other from one quarter material. I drew diagonal lines from one corner to the other on both pieces. I then drew a line slightly offset from the center with the help of a combination square. I grabbed a scrap board that was nice and square and lined up my markings on the edge with the help of a speed square. The key here is to get a perfect 45 degrees, so take your time. I used a couple of brad nails to hold it in place and then made the cut on my table saw. And I did the same for the second piece, which has a greater offset. I may have underestimated my strength here. Anyway, I then glued both pieces together. It's again super important to get the edges perfectly aligned, so I used the edge of my level, and once the alignment was perfect, I put in a couple brad nails to make sure it wouldn't move while it dried. I then pre-drilled four holes for the T-Track bolts and carried it over to the sled. With it pushed back square against the fence and the point of the triangle dead center on the kerf line, I made the cut. Next, all that's left is to lock it into place using the T-Track. Hey, I hope you liked this video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, I love to have you, so be sure to hit that subscribe button. Until next time, thanks for watching. See you soon.